when the season ends, it's tough. There's only one team wins their last game in college basketball. So 350 something teams uh, lose their last game. And it's, uh, it's hard. And when you go on a journey, uh, a long journey with guys, and especially when, uh, like last year, tough loss, all the injuries we dealt with, the special seniors that were on our team, you got, you have to go in that locker room and be mature enough and composed enough to make sure that you, my focus is not the game. Uh, just to make sure that they know we appreciate them and, uh, and everything they did for UCLA. Their loyalty to us as coaches, uh, their toughness, uh, everything they gave with their heart and soul. Uh, and you got to try to make sure you get that across to them in the moment and to try to help ease the pain because it's almost like you drove off a cliff. <laughs> you're just going down the highway with the top down and things are great. And you're having it like in our case, you're having an unbelievable season. Then you have the injuries, and then boom, you lose on a last second shot. It's uh, it's hard for the kids. You can't worry about yourself at that time. You know, you got plenty of time to wallow, <laughs> but you got to take care of the kids at first. Uh, but it, it's it's one of the hardest parts of our our job is making sure you handle that moment the right way and get the right message across. Well, we're not going to be able to plug this guy in for Tiger, that guy in for Jaime. Um, you know, and even in David's case, he had been here so long and had been so effective. We're going to have to uh, develop our own organic identity with this team. And we've been working all summer on that, all fall on that. And uh, it's, it's going to take games. It's going to take some tough times because you have to go through adversity together. So part of becoming who those guys were, uh, were, were some of the losses they took and the way they responded to that and how they grew out of that. And you have to grow uh, to be who you want to be eventually as a team. And the only way you can have growth, uh, you got to play some games. You're not going to win them all because you're going to maybe play some games you're not ready to play against some teams that are maybe more veteran teams than you at that time. And that's the beauty of college basketball, though. So it, it, because March is what matters in college basketball. So, it, so uh, that's going to really be the theme of our, our season. We're going to have to grow. Uh, and, and organically, those points that graduated and went to the NBA get absorbed uh, and guys get comfortable. Uh, they know what we expect from them. They know what we want them to do, what we don't want them to do. But it's just going to be a journey. Uh, but I love our talent level and our team attitude is great, but we haven't been through adversity yet. Well, look, there's nothing better than uh, having one of your favorite players ever and such a wonderful kid and a wonderful family, the Hawkeyes family, and obviously Jaimito, as they call him, to, to just watch his whole journey. And when it culminated in him being the 18th pick in the NBA draft, it was almost too good to be true. Uh, because sometimes in life, there's things that should happen. They don't happen. That should have happened. Um, you know, the way our season ended, it should have happened differently. Sometimes it doesn't work that way. It worked the right way. Great kid, unbelievable attitude and work ethic. Loved his school. Unbelievable winner. Just a just a, a warrior of a competitor, and improved, and what was, you know, turned into one of the best players that's played here, and, and that's saying a lot at UCLA, with the numbers he put up over four years. Uh, so for him to get when he went that the, the final day, I knew that that Miami was going to take him, uh, unless Golden State traded up two slots to be able to take him before Miami could get him. Uh, it was an honor for me because. You know, I know what Miami stands for, the Heat culture. Uh, they're trying to win. They're not going to take him if they don't believe in him as a winner, as a competitor. And obviously that reflects on our program. So uh, now, obviously, uh, we have other guys in the pros um, that we work root for all of them. But you can add the Heat to the list because uh, I've already made uh, get, get the league pass to watch some Heat games. When you compare this summer, maybe would be 
to the summer of 2019 uh, when you have a bunch of guys you haven't coached yet. And uh, I believe in trained or untrained. So I have eight guys that are untrained uh, by our coaching staff and in our culture. And that takes a lot of work. Uh, when I got here in 2019, we had a bunch of returning players, but it, they were not trained uh, as far as competitiveness, how to be a teammate, how to win, and, and, and making sure you sacrifice the way you need to sacrifice, uh, playing with physicality. So all these things that you have to train your players to do uh, is what we're doing now. So it's what we've been doing all summer, all fall, but it's not going to stop just because the season started, you know, because the training in season is the most important thing and uh, dealing with adversity that uh, comes in the form of your opponents, uh, comes in the form of uh, pressure situations and rebounding from a loss. So uh, it's very similar uh, in, in, in ways that, uh, because the other, the other, my other three years here, we obviously had almost the whole team returning a lot of times. So a lot of turnover, but um, second time here for me. But twenty-one years as a head coach, I've had it plenty. Uh, the, the Maui field is unbelievable. Uh, thank goodness it's not a round robin. <laughs> You have to play. You don't have to play everybody. You only got to play three teams. So, you know, Marquette uh, in the first game, I, before uh, we got to uh, some of the transfer portal things, Marquette back in May, people had him ranked number one in the nation uh, in the in the uh, way too early top 25s. Uh, you know, Coach Smart does a great job. Uh, he's in, He's found a perfect place, I think. Uh, for what you can see, how good of a fit he is uh, at Marquette. Uh, he's from Wisconsin, but he's got it going there, and they got a lot of returning players. So that would be a real challenge for us early on. But the field is just unbelievable. I mean, but it's really par for the course in, in the Maui Invitational. You know, they've done such a great job of ha having so many loaded fields over the years that uh, this year's is just another one of many. Well, basketball truly is a global game now. So uh, all you have to do is look at the best players in the NBA. Uh, look at the multiple repeat MVPs in the NBA. Uh, none of them are from the United States. You know, when you start to look at the last four MVPs in, in the greatest league in the world, uh, you look at uh, all you got to do is look at the top 10 players in the NBA. All you got to do is watch the World Cup. Uh, where we didn't even medal as the U.S. as USA, uh, which you know, years thirty years ago was unheard of. You know, basketball has truly become a global game. You know, not maybe not as caught up as soccer on the European continent, uh, but in some other places, uh, especially in, in some of the West African countries, even the Asian countries, the basketball popularity is just off the charts, and the growth over the last thirty years is amazing. And there's so many good players around the globe uh, that I think that we would be remiss if we weren't recruiting the entire world because there's no rules against it, right? You know, the whole world plays basketball. That's why it's the hardest sport to become a pro in. Smaller team, whole world plays, unlike baseball and football. So we've been able to tap into that. Uh, you know, that could fluctuate in time. Obviously, we've got a huge international flair on this team. Because we had so much turnover last year, and we had to get so many new players, but uh, it'll, I know that creates a, a, a lot of conversation in the media and intrigue for the fans, but it's just, at the end of the day, we don't care where, where, where our players are from. We're just trying to win games, and we believe you got to get talent, and you got to get character, you got to get good kids, and then you got a chance to put a real team together. Well, as we took the trip to Spain to all, in August, Adai Mara, Burke, Bouillet, and Shell, and Dave Dembona didn't get to play. Um, but I just wanted to get the extra practices and mostly spend time together. You got to You're trying to catch up over time. You're trying to speed up. You're trying to catch up. You're trying to make sure that you get uh, your team bonding, and you got to spend time together. And the only way you can catch up uh, to a team that's maybe spent more time together than, than others is to do the summer tour. 
because then you're obviously going to spend much more time together traveling, uh, doing a lot of the fun things we did. And it was ended up being a great trip. I think the guys loved it. Hopefully that sped up our bonding process a little bit. Well, we only played with seven scholarship guys when we played Girona, the ACB team, who's a cut, just a cut under the NBA team. So we were severely outmanned, but that was okay. I wanted that. I wanted our guys to get a taste of pro basketball. Uh, they hear so much that they're a pro, they're going to be a pro. They needed to see what guys are real pros do. Guys making over a million dollars a year to play in the best league, not named the NBA in the world. Now, we had, unfortunately, we had to do it shorthanded. We weren't practicing while we were over there. But uh, I just wanted our guys to see Girona and see them play. And by the way, they're doing extremely well here early in the season. Uh, I think they're five or six and one early, early on here at, o, over in Spain. So uh, just I want our guys to learn from them and, and see how smart they play and how hard they play and just realize, like, uh, it might be a little bit harder to be a professional than I thought it was, or everybody else told me it was going to be, because that's the reality. Kids don't know. Everybody tells them things. Um, and in my, it's my job to try to get the truth to them. So I let them see it with their own eyes in the form of their opponent. Well, you got, you just talk about Lazar Stefanovic, if you're a Bruin. Uh, you should be really excited the fact that you have a player that wanted to be at UCLA. Didn't come here for NIL. A lot of transfers out there just trying to get the most money that they can get in the transfer portal, and that's their prerogative. Lazar Stefanovic wanted to go to UCLA. He had obviously been here uh, playing at Utah in the Pac-12, uh, a quick visit in and out, um, and it really wasn't to be in Westwood although he does like that. It was, he wanted to win. He wanted to be at a high level program. He wanted to try to play at the top of college basketball. And he saw us up close and personal and he wanted to join us. Uh, didn't visit any other schools, uh, but he's a veteran. We obviously needed a veteran. Uh, when you talk about this recruiting class, seven freshmen was enough. We didn't need eight. <laughs> so we need a veteran guy that's played college basketball that can be in the right spot at the right time and help his teammates. He's got all the characteristics of a winner, uh, and he's a good player. He's sneaky athletic with great size, and he's going to give us scoring punch. He's going to give us leadership. He's just a winner. Well, Brandon Williams is uh, somebody we need because of his size and his versatility. We lost that with Jaime. Uh, his 18th birthday is coming soon on November 1st, and he is, uh, is 6'8", 215 pounds, extremely versatile uh, and competitive. Much uh, brings, I'd say, much more toughness than most freshmen bring to the table. Can play through his fatigue. Uh, sneaky uh, good player with his passing for a guy his size. Uh, and just wants to win. Another guy, man, he, he just wants to hold up his end of the bargain and help UCLA win. And if he would have stayed in high school, which he could have easily done, obviously he's the youngest player in college basketball this year, he would have been a, an elite, elite high school player if he would have stayed at that level. So we're lucky to get him here, get him early, and get him out of New York City. And uh, he's going to be very good for us. And then you, when you look at uh, Sebastian Mack, who we got out of Las Vegas, uh, his father played many years in the NBA, Sam Mack. Great explosiveness, hard to describe until you see it in person. Burst of speed to get into the paint and get fouled. Um, has natural, natural ability. Young player, learns got to learn all the other things, defend, defend on the ball, off the ball, accountability, um, most of the freshman things that a guy has to learn. But he's got raw ability that's really, really impressive. Um, and we, uh, his speed is hard to teach, can't simulate it. And he's going to be able to give us some scoring punch right away, I think, as a freshman. Devin Williams uh, from Corona Centennial here uh, in the Inland Empire is a 6'11", great athlete who can make a shot, can run like a deer, uh, and play above the rim. He's getting stronger. This is, uh, this is his understudy year to get stronger and learn, play with the, uh, the plethora of big men that we have. 
uh, because he is the future for us on the interior as a guy that can run block shots and be a big time player on the interior. And he just needs time. He's, his body's got to grow into his arms and legs, but he's got skill level and quickness uh, for somebody his size that's really uncanny. When you talk about our international recruits, for, usually it starts with a Daimara. Uh, he's internationally, at least, extremely well known. Uh, being seven foot three and being on, on the Spanish national teams uh, at all levels. And when you're his size, obviously you stand out. And you're always going to be uh, ballyhooed and talked about at seven three. When you can shoot and pass and have the skill level that a Daimara has, we're very lucky to have him here and uh, his development. And his family uh, has been put in our hands for him to grow as a, as a young person. Again, one of the top youngest freshmen in the country, just an 18-year-old, and he will be all season. Although he's 7'3", he's the baby-faced assassin. So he can really pass the ball, uh, and he's just got great offensive talent. And he's a wonderful kid. He's adjusted quickly here. And we go in size down to Burke, uh, Buyuk and 6'9", from Turkey. Left-handed. A very versatile player like a Jaime Jaquez uh, can shoot the three, can drive it, can post up and score, uh, has experience on the on the big stage, has played at different levels of international basketball and FIBA and his national teams, um, where, where he's a big factor for the Turkish uh, national teams in his age groups. He's their best player on a couple of different age groups. So we need him right away, his versatility, his toughness, and, and he's got some sneaky experience against older guys that he's had to play on those teams uh, in the in the Turkish league. So then you go down, to, next will be Alain Fablu uh, from Paris. Great athlete on the wing, still learning how to play on the offensive end, uh, le learning his strengths and weaknesses, but plays hard, rebounds, uh, plays way above the rim. He's probably the best athlete of all our perimeter players, not even close. Uh, he's got a huge upside to be an elite defender, a la Jalen Clark. And then Jan Vide uh, as point guard, six foot five or six from Slovenia. Uh, just a tremendous, tremendous prospect. Been extremely well coached. He's ready made. Uh, he's he's uh, played at very high levels. He knows how to play. He's extremely intelligent, but he's got great skill for a guy his size to handle the ball and play point guard. He can get where he wants to go versus quickness, and he really understands basketball, and we are really lucky to have him. He'll be a big factor for us this year. Well, when I mean, you have somebody uh, that stayed in your program as long as Kenny has, uh, he's been here now all five years with us, and he's red-shirted. He's dealt with the COVID stuff. Uh, he's dealt with not playing at all early in his career. Uh, to being a key guy to help us get to the Sweet 16 last year with all the injuries we dealt with, uh, let alone back when he helped get us to the Final Four uh, when we lost uh, Jalen Hill during that season. And we were playing with only Cody Riley, and we were extremely small, and he was thrust into action. Was, he, so Kenny's just been such a program guy. That's really the, the term for Kenny. Uh, he is the veteran on this team. You know, he's the Udonis Haslam Miami, uh, from the Miami Heat. Uh, he is that in, in, in our locker room. Uh, the wisdom to the young guys, the focus on the right things, get their degree while they're here, uh, make sure they're – uh, doing the right things on the floor, off the floor, listening to coaches. Uh, just a great extension of our coaching staff. Um, you know, he, he is such a good guy to have around. I'm going to miss him when he's gone. But he has really improved as a player, as we've talked a lot about. And he's going to play a lot this year. Yeah, the big key for Adam is going to be harnessing his aggressiveness, uh, making sure uh, that he picks up where he left off late in the year, um, being able to play without fouling. Because when he's in the game, he is a game changer. Our defense is as good as anybody in the country when he is in the game. Uh, our rebounding is good as anybody when he is in the game. So I told him we have enough assistant coaches and we have to make sure he focuses on 
uh, harnessing that aggressive nature that he has on the defensive end and going after balls. Uh, that that's how he got hurt. Number one, number two, again, need him on the floor. But his uh, he's vastly underrated nationally in all these magazines and all this stuff. I don't read it all, but I haven't heard anybody mention him. I haven't had anybody call me. And uh, he's as good a player on the front line as anybody in college basketball. Anybody. So we're very lucky to have him back. Well, Dylan's uh, going to play a lot more, you know, with Tiger Campbell going, a lot of minutes to be had. So he's got great quickness. Uh, he's got the uh, ability to shoot the ball, uh, confident offensive player, still learning how to play point and not just lead, lead guards, a scorer, point guard, run your team. He's, he's got to grow in the point guard area. And he's got Jan Vide to help him. Uh, so he's just got to go all out when he's in there and he grow. With the minutes, you get growth. That's the key. You got to have minutes to have growth and consistent minutes, which he's going to get this year. But uh, we got a couple of them that can really do it. So that's pretty much par for the course here at UCLA. All you got to do is look around from the holidays on down to the Farmers and Baron Davis and Lonzo Balls. And there's so many uh, NBA point guards that have played here. Uh, these guys are really going to be special as well. So Will McClendon is uh, going to be a big key for us. Uh, not that he has to score uh, every game. Uh, his leadership. You know, Will plays hard. And I'm a big believer. You can't have any aspirations of really winning at a high level if you don't play hard enough to win at a high level. Because you go to play certain teams, they're going to play so hard. If you can't match it, you're losing. I don't care what your talent level is. Will's trained on how to play hard. So uh, that, that's what we need with this team in particular, with so many new untrained guys. Now, you know, I don't want to put too much pressure on Will, but I'm just going to tell everybody out there that uh, Will McClendon had a vicious knee injury, uh, didn't play as a senior in high school, then had to sit out and rehab. Uh, you can throw away last year for us. Uh, if you want to just look at Will at all last year, you look at, at him – playing center against Arizona, and they couldn't get the ball inside in the Pac-12 championship game and his competitive fight. His game is back, and people will see it. Well, there's nothing like our students here at UCLA coming and making a difference, and fans in, in, of all ages coming to our home games. You know, we have a – 20 plus game home winning streak, longest in the nation. And if you throw in fans at the games, it's been three years, uh, three seasons we haven't lost at home, which is, uh, what you have to do to be an elite program. You want to be, uh, get, you want to be a high seeded team in the NCAA tournament. You want to compete for championships. You got to have the fans and the fans here have made a huge difference. Our student body's been awesome. The fan loyalty matters. Uh, and I need our fans to take as much pride in our home winning streak and just our home dominance in general as we do as a program. You have to have it if you want to be uh, elite, if you want to be elite in college basketball in particular, where the home court advantage is the biggest of any U.S. major sport, you have to dominate at home. So I need everybody, not just the coaches, the players, the students, the fans. I need all of us as one uh, to look at that with pride. And say, you know, as you're getting ready to come to the games, we're not going to let this team get out of here with a win. No matter how loud we got to get, if our team struggles, we're going to pick them up uh, with our energy and our enthusiasm. We're going to make sure that uh, nobody gets out of Pauley Pavilion alive.